I love to grow squash, but it can be a very big challenge in the garden because of an insect called the squash vine borer. This is a worm that actually burrows into the stem of the squash and starts to eat the plant from the inside out. And sometimes you don't notice that it's happening until you see the plant totally wilt. And by then it's too late to do any control. And uh, so there's some strategy because you can do to make yourself successful with growing squash. Now, if you're growing butternut or acorn squash, those tend to have more resistance to squash vine borers because they don't have the hollow stems as the yellow and green squashes. Also, the patty pan squash tends to have fewer problems too. But if you're determined to grow the greens and yellow squashes, there are a couple of things you can do. Now, one thing that I do is I plant a lot of squash and I plant some just kind of seeds. There's always extra seeds in the packet. So I plant seeds all over the garden. Those are my trap plants. The other thing that I do, and when those start to get the insects inside the stem, I just pull the plant out, destroy the larva, and throw those plants in the trash. Now, I do plant some squash that I'm going to protect, and I, I tend to plant them along with some onion sets that I've purchased during the winter and saved, and some radish seeds. So it's usually too hot to get good onions and radishes from these plants, but they're really just a companion so that it helps detour, deter the adults uh, wasp-like moth from planting their eggs near those plants when you put the seeds in or the new plants in. Now the, uh, the adult of the squash vine borer looks like a wasp, but if you know what the adult looks like, you can easily catch them and dispatch them. And I know it's a little bit intimidating because it looks like a wasp. So uh, just make sure you know the, the, what the adult looks like and get rid of those when you see them in the garden. Now you can also spray your plants regularly with spinosad once the plants are in once or twice a week spray the area around the root uh, the uh, base of the plant with spinosad that should help destroy any larvae that are hatching out from the eggs an adult can lay 150 to 250 eggs in your garden so that's the reason i put all the uh, other extra plants out to help keep those uh, moths busy. Now you can cover the stems with foil. That prevents the larva from hatching out in the egg form and burrowing into the stem. But if you notice a hole in the stem with a little bit of sawdust-like shaving at the base of the plant, if you'll cut and make a, a cut with a sharp knife, go in and pull out any larva that you see, and sometimes it's more than one, then close that stem up, put some good compost on top, and bury the stem again, a lot of times the plant will recover. But again, if you wait till the plants are wilting, it's too late. Another thing you can do is inject Bt into the stem. I haven't found the be that to be as effective as, as actually pulling the caterpillars out. But one thing that I think is really crucial is covering your plants. Now you want to use a lightweight grow web fabric. This is not the same fabric that you use for protecting your plants in the winter. It's much lighter weight. And this is just for preventing insects from getting to your plants. Make a tent over your plants and cover them until they start to bloom with female flowers. The first flowers on your squash are male flowers. So the female flowers are easy to, to tell because they have at the base of the flower a little swelling that looks like the squash. And so once you start to have female flowers on the plants, you've got to pull that cover off so that the insect pollinators can get to those plants. When you cover your plants, make sure the covering is very tight to the ground. I use rebar hoops and then I clip the, re the uh, fabric onto the hoops with spring clamps all the way down to the ground, very secure, then pull that off and just keep planting those decoy plants around the garden throughout the growing season. You might even put some seeds in a container so that you have a new succession crop to come in. And hopefully if you do these things, you'll have more squash than you know what to do with.